All right, we're live. Let's scoot this back now. So today we're going to be talking about a pencil. So what is so special about a pencil and what does this have to do with the free market economy? Um, so we are on week number three and book number two. Actually, today we're going to be going over the miraculous pencil. It's based on a short essay um, written by Leonard Reed that really describes how this pencil uh, is represented by the free market and what the what the free market has to do with just creating this pencil here. A uh, very simple object and something everybody has seen and used before in school. Well, probably the most basic instrument we use. Um, so first, again, the reason we're doing these lessons weekly is so that these boys can get a, since they're home for e-learning, we're gonna do a, just take the opportunity to teach them about the free market basics. Um, and you know the basics upon which this country was founded. So with that being said, Bo and Jack, why don't you guys give us, this is Bo, this is Jack. You guys can give us a short uh, summary of the book. What'd you, what'd you get out of the book? Um, that nobody in the whole world knows, like nobody on the face of the earth knows how to make the, a pencil, like something as simple as a pencil and nobody knows how to make it. Okay, cool. Jack? There's so many things that come along with making a pencil. Like so many people work together just to make one pencil. That's a great point. So let's start there with an example of, why don't we, everybody understands what a family tree is, right? It's like a tree with branches to show you where you came from and who you came from. Mm -hmm. uh, and it goes on and on and on and on back to the beginning of time. Well, we can do kind of the similar thing here with a pencil, create a family tree. So. How many different parts of the pencil do you see? Um, do I them all? Here, stand over here so we can see your drawing. Well, no, just circle them. So we have, starting at the bottom, what do you got here? Just, just, yeah, just put a circle around it, I don't care. Or an arrow. Yeah, what do we got? We got the lead. Lead, okay. And then... Uh, we'll do a spelling class next week. Yeah, you spelled lead wrong. That's okay. <laughs> Wood. Wood, okay. And then the yellow paint. Yeah, that should be yellow because that's a normal pencil paint. Okay. And then the metal. It's actually copper. Don't care. <laughs> and then the rubber. Okay. Which we call. Is it BB? We call an eraser. Well, I don't right? Know. All right. Yeah, good. So those are the parts of the tree. So let's talk. Which, which one do you want to? Dissect right now. We're dissecting the lead. The lead? Okay. So let's create a family tree off the lead. So in order to get the lead, what what is needed? What materials? We need... Do you remember? Uh, I think graphite is the main material. Okay. So when you graphite... Okay. So how do we get graphite? We need a mine. Okay. So we need a mine. So at the mine, what do they, machines, what do you need? Like okay. Construction machines. What kind of machine? Okay. Like digging things. Okay. So shovels. yeah, earth movers. So big machines. Okay. Um, how do we make the machines? A what are those made out of? A lot of metal. Okay. A lot of metal. What else? Um, rubber, for the rubber, okay. Glass, remember? Glass, nice. Fuel. Fuel. Okay. And all of these take something else to produce those too, right? So as you can see, this can go on and on and on and on back to talking about the people that are needed to to harvest the materials to make and produce the glass and how do those people eat well you need farmers to make food to feed them um, you know the farmers need equipment they need tools they need land so it goes on and on and on all just to make the lead so we could do the same thing with the wood the paint the metal and the rubber um, the lead also is there only one place in the world to get the graphite for that lead no no okay so what 
What does that mean? That means... So if there's different places in the world to get that graphite, if I'm the one producing that pencil, what am I going to look for? Um, How am I going to choose where to get that? Um, by factories? Well, yeah, I'll go look at their operation, but how am I going to make the decision on which one I choose? Who I buy from? Like, how would I, how would you make a decision? Like, if you wanted a new pair of shoes and you had $100 in your pocket, how would you decide which pair of shoes you're going to get? The one that costs. Okay, so cost. Yeah, that's good. So price is a factor. And... Do I want to pay the most for the, the lead or the least for the lead? The least. the least, right? So I can make money. So I want to find the lowest price. Now what if the lowest price, it was just junky lead and every time you try to write it, it broke in half? And you would want different lead? Yeah, different lead, so better quality, right? Okay. I want the lowest price and the best quality. Okay, do you think the people who are creating that lead, manufacturing that lead, know that me as the buyer, that I want the lowest price and the best quality? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, why do you think they know that? Because nobody wants to spend $100 on a piece of lead. Right, because, and also because they're trying to make money too, and they have to buy materials and pay people, and they want to spend the least amount of money and get the best quality in return, right? So what does that mean if there's five places to choose from and they all want my business, what do they what do they have to do? They have to lower the price. Maybe. Yeah. They could lower the price or what could they do? They could. What's the other? Quality. Raise the quality. They could raise the quality or they could do both. So what happens when you have five people competing to sell the same product? Does, do they do they try harder or do they try less hard? Harder, they try harder. They try harder because they want my business, right? So they have to come up with the best product at the lowest possible price. So what do we call that when when they're all trying to be the one that that earns my business to buy from them? What are they doing with each other? Competing. They're competing. So that's what competition is, right? When people are um, working to provide the best possible product so that you will buy it from them, right? So is competition a good thing or a bad thing then? A good thing. Good thing, right? Because it produces the best quality and quite often the lowest price. Okay. So that's the, the family tree. And like I said, we could go on and on and on, and that tree would probably fill this entire wall, this entire room with all the little circles we could make, right? All right. Now let's talk, um, if you had to make that pencil yourself, would you be able to? Probably not, Come up here. for sure not. For sure not? Why not? Because I don't know how to make a like, machine no? or anything pretty much. Can you do any of that? Uh, yes, probably. Oh, okay, probably. yeah, what, would, what could you do? You could chop down a tree. You could chop down a tree, okay? So you could, yeah, so you could be one of the guys that chops down the tree. Or mines. Okay, or you could work in a mine. Okay, so you could do one of those things. Could you do, but you couldn't do all of them, no. is what you're saying. Yes. Okay, what we call there, we call that a division of labor. Does that make sense? You have all this labor. All of this stuff requires labor. You know what labor is? Yes. Okay, which is what? People working. Working. Yeah, right. But if you divide that labor between different people doing different jobs, that's called division of labor. So, and I think we understand how that's seen in the pencil, but how can you think of how division of labor has been good or has improved your life? Like, what did that book say about um, if you had to create the pencil on your own, what would that mean for your life? Um, what would you be doing and what would you not be able to do? I would be you wouldn't be able to hunt for food to eat or like get water to drink because you'd be spending way too much time like trying to find stuff to, to make the pencil.
potential. Right. You'd be trying to find, yeah, you'd be spending all your time doing all of those jobs and you wouldn't be able to actually like live your life, right? You wouldn't be able to play baseball. You wouldn't have any time because you'd be spending all your time making a pencil, right? So can you think of anything else? I mean, just look at your clothes right now. Can you imagine right now like what it took to produce that shirt right there? Fabric? Yeah. And the fabric has to come from something else, right? And whatever that is, you need people and tools and all of that to, to put it together. So division of labor means that you get to do what you want to do and produce the best thing that you can produce for the economy and let everybody else do what they do best. And then if you all do what you do best and bring it all together, that's really what an economy is. So what do you, what do you understand about an economy? Like, it's people working together. Yeah, yeah, it's people working together. Um, individuals who produce something, they create something, they buy and they sell, right? So you go walk to the store or we go to Target, like that's part of the economy, right? Because a lot of people made all the stuff in the store and you're there to buy it. But how can you buy it? By using your money. You have to use your money. And how'd you get your money? From working. From working. From providing a service to somebody else, right? So it's all like a big circle. Um, another term we learned in the book is spontaneous order. Do you guys remember that one? I don't remember no. what it means. You don't remember what it means? Okay. It's social harmony and market efficiency so everybody getting along and working together and efficiency meaning that it's done in the best way best way possible without wasting anything um, through decisions by individuals like Bo making a decision um, guided by your desires like what you want to do what your self-interest is so Bo what do you want to be when you grow up um why well, I want to, I don't know, maybe be in the Army or like be in the NHL. Okay, we'll cool. just pretend you said Air Force instead of Army. So you want to be in the Air Force. <laughs> okay, so, but you want to do that because that's something you want to do, right? Mm -hmm. It's a decision you want to make on your own and not because somebody else wants you to do that, right? Okay, so that's good, right? Because that's, you're doing something you want to do and that you're going to be good at and who else benefits from that? Um, me. You, yeah, sure. And the country. And the country. Right, for keeping people safe, right? Cool. So that's, that was a short lesson, but that's really the crux of it. That the pencil, here, scoot in here. The pencil is such a simple object, but there's millions and millions of people that were involved in just making this one pencil because of all the different parts and everything needed to to manufacture that and produce it these happen to be made or manufactured in indonesia uh, but they could be manufactured anywhere that doesn't mean it was all created in indonesia all the parts came from all over the world by a bunch of different people who are speak different languages who have different religions who think differently wear different clothes but all of their work came together to make that one little pencil. So, any parting thoughts? No. No? Jack, parting thoughts? No? Mm -hmm. Big surprise. All right, that's it. Uh, next week, actually, let me get the book out. Next week, we will be going over um, book number three in the series, which is, oh, this is my favorite one. So next week is going to be my favorite. The Creature from Jekyll Island. So if you have not read this book, the real book, or listened to the audio book, I highly, highly suggest it. Uh, just a fair warning that you cannot unsee what you see in this book or unhear what you listen to in that book. So until next week, thanks. What do you mean?